<laughs> my mother will like that. She'll like that. Mm -hmm. um, can we talk about your mom? I think so. Okay. Is it okay? It, it, yeah, it's all right with them. Now, I keep reading reviews and hearing things on infotainment programs. Is this movie about your mom, Debbie Reynolds, and yourself? Is it loosely based? Is it not based at all? Well, it's so extremely loosely based that it's not based. I mean, I, it's about a girl who was in a rehab. Well, yes, I was, but purely as an experimental thing. I knew I'd write a movie, and so I thought, good subject. You know, a lot of people do drugs. I figure I'll do some going to rehab, and it'll make a screenplay. <laughs> So anyway, that's what I tell my mom. Mm -hmm. And uh, and in it, uh, <laughs> she gets a film when she gets out of the rehab, and one of the conditions of the insurance company is that she moves in with her mother. Well, luckily for my mother, I did not ever have to move in with her because I would have been a pain in the ass. So, <laughs> so, so uh, that's what it's about, and that never happened. And there's sort of a lot of conflict between the mother and the daughter. But my, And my mother and I get along fine. But who's going to go see a movie about two women that get along fine, and by the end of the picture, they get along better? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds sort of dull to me. At one time, you and your mom fought a lot? When I was a, a teenager, I was kind of a rebellious kind of a gal, not like the nice chick that I am now. Mm -hmm. I've only become nice recently, and only on talk shows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a real idiot backstage. <laughs> but uh, we did fight when I was a teenager. Uh, she had a lot of problems, and I urgently needed my mother to be all right. And so it was like when she went through a crisis, and my mother was the only person I know that had a nervous breakdown without getting nervous or breaking down. <laughs> she just moved right through it. I mean, she really is the unsinkable Molly Brown. And so everyone in, about this is saying, oh, but then Debbie really drinks and this. If Debbie drank, how did she do 40 films and be on the road for the last 20 years, you know? Yeah. So it's like... <laughs> I did all her drinking for her. <laughs> and apparently, if you go by the New York Post, I'm still doing it, so... Uh... That's not true. No, but they had me drinking the other night at yeah. a restaurant, like a schmuck. What am I... Sorry, it's the Jewish New Year. <laughs> <laughs> what am I gonna do? This, at this point, I'm gonna go down to a restaurant in the village, and I'm gonna booze it up with my editor and my publisher, just to get subject matter for my third book. <laughs> so I was a druggie, and now I'm an alcoholic. And, and, and that's a serious newspaper. That's not like well, The Examiner. Wait a, minute, wait a minute, it's not that serious. If they're <laughs> reporting that, it can't be that serious. Yeah, and, but, but you know, you, you know my point. It's, I think we, we read USA Today or, or that paper, and, and we assume that it's all true. true, yeah. Well, that's why I said that my, this mo the postcards is a bit like The Enquirer. It has a little bit of the truth mixed up with a lot of fantasy. Yeah, and, and part of the fantasy and the loosely based stuff is that Debbie Reynolds drinks, because I yeah. guess Shirley MacLaine drinks a lot in this movie. No, she drinks twice when she's upset, but everyone mm -hmm. feels like, ooh, we're getting like a little bird's eye view, and, and, and that means that Debbie drinks when she's upset. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I don't think that she does, but uh, I'll check in with her later. Maybe she'll be upset <laughs> from watching the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think she only drinks on the, on the Jewish New Year, because, you know, she had two Jewish husbands, and so I think she's earned the right. <laughs> Did you ever pour... See, now I don't know what's true. Did you ever pour... I don't either. Yes, what's true? Is this even happening? Is your name Carrie? <laughs> oh, see, this is true. Okay, yeah, this Anything is... Anything that happens after this. Yeah, well, I said, are. my book isn't uh, autobiographical. It's a prophecy. So I will be doing all this weird chick sex stuff later, as soon as I can talk to Jeff Goldblum's mother. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, we, we got to get to that too. But <laughs> let, let me ask you this question to find out if it's true. Did you pour milk in your mom's lap? Oh, well, that's not in the movie, but yes. No, well, she opened a door and I had a glass of milk and it splashed it a little on me. And so, characteristically and over dramatically in a show business family, I dumped the remainder of the milk in her lap. She took me by the hair into the kitchen and put baked beans in my hair. <laughs> Which is why I think it has a lot of the nice condition that it does now. <laughs> Mexican food is excellent for hair care. Okay, I'll remember that. Uh, and I'll... I know that hair is a big topic on your show. Very important. Hair is very important. And See, we'll... if you'd used the baked beans instead of this yeah, hat, man, yeah, I think yeah. it would have looked well. If, no, if, but you're right. If I came out here with guacamole on my head, I'd probably... It would be a look. Not and only would it have good hair, yeah, it would have worked. 
Yeah. Would have worked. You're the color coordinator. Ah, I see. I, I Monday. Need, do I need a writer me. like you around me all the time. I'm here, man. I'm not leaving. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we have. <laughs> Yes, she can stay. Um, we can learn to tap dance together. Yeah. I yeah. can teach you a waltz clog. I know one. You know a waltz clog? Yeah. Because your mom's a great my dancer. My mom's a great tap dancer, but I unfortunately dance like my father. Yeah. Well, I also take drugs like my father. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Carrie Fisher, back in a moment. Has your mom seen the movie? Yeah, we saw it together. She said she liked the fight scene so much, she thought we should find a nice staircase and have a couple of ourselves. Yeah. So if anybody can recommend any, you know. That's good. And, and how are you with the film? Did it come out the way you wanted it to? Yeah, I mean, it's the best people possible to make it. I mean, who, you know, what are you going to say, you know? Meryl, could you try a different, like, you know, in that scene? <laughs> Gene Hackman, maybe try kind of a crazier thing, Gene. I don't know. You know You're so? an actress. Did you ever think at any time about playing yourself? Ugh, I don't even like to do it in real life, wherever no. that is. Yeah. No, I mean, to me, it would be like watching a car crash for about an hour and a half. And, and so I, no, I don't like to watch myself on camera. I always think I'm too fat and too something, and there's a puff under my eyes, the post-30 puff that you'll be getting soon. Come I on. had it when I was eight. <laughs> ah, and then it just I, passed? Yeah, I, oh, no, I've always been pussy. I've always been puffy, like, look, Louis Vuitton. That's water right? retention. Right. Oh, really? Yeah, I always say I'm, I'm retaining fluids for Whitney Houston. <laughs> <laughs> well, because clearly she's not retaining her own, so who do you think is doing? Where do you think I get all of this? It's all with you. <laughs> uh, oh, we got to talk about the book a little bit. What's uh -oh. this book about? I don't know anymore. <laughs> uh, it's about, uh, well, it's about sort of chick sexuality. It's a girl who's a soap opera writer during this writer's strike who, uh, ill-advisedly has dinner with her ex-husband who's in a new, fabulous, successful relationship. So she follows him to the Hamptons where he's living with his new perfect mate and stalks him. It's a sort of a not-so-fatal attraction. Yeah. Hides in his closet and, you know, forces a confrontation, stuff like that. No. Dysfunctional mating habits of heterosexual <laughs> white chicks, you know. Bad um, stuff. All chicks, actually. I think so. Uh, surrender the pink. I you know, I'm almost afraid to ask where that comes from. Uh, well, I was on my last book tour, and we were in a hotel room, and a friend of mine who's Italian and an actor, and Jim Borelli, and he burst into the room, leapt on me on the bed, and said, OK, baby, spread them. Surrender the pink. up on all the the current lingo i know well there and that one slipped by me i know me too i was so thrilled when i heard it but you know, it's, it's very fly <laughs> it's you, know? not, you can use it surrender to pink <laughs> so say you can use that one at home <laughs> no don't try these at home um, <laughs> surrender to pink wow so there's a lot of sex in that book yes you, you, you. <laughs> well, now why did you say it like that? I don't know, because I, I probably should have talked to Jeff Goldblum's mother before I wrote it, but, yeah. My grandmother said about my first book, she said, I didn't really understand that, all that chemical dependency stuff, but I understand this, it's about prostitution, which to her, sex out of wedlock is prostitution. Mm. My, grandmother, my grandmother saw the movie and she said, well, I don't know how they made such a great movie out of such a lousy book. <laughs> She's not a fan of the first book. This all one right. was all right, though. Yeah, are you, are you very sexual? Uh, uh now. Um, <laughs> no, I think I just sort of vented it all into that, and now I'm just going to go into a long, protracted, frigid stage. <laughs> no, I don't think I am. I'm too verbal. I mean, I like to keep it mental, because I always think when I'm in sex, how did I get here? This is so weird. I mean, it is weird. You, you think it's weird? Well, you could be walking down the street with someone, you know, and, and probably, like, 13 hours earlier, your face was in their genitals or something, and now... <laughs> and you're just acting like it never...
never really happened, or it happened, and that was like, fine, thank you. How are you? Yes. <laughs> just, just sort of like that made sense. Yes. I mean, you know how they call it the two-back monster? I've never heard that terminology either. I'm like I a need big a help for during you. This interview. <laughs> Surrender the pink, S-U-R, two-back monster. Two-back, explain that now. The, the... <laughs> If it's a party, it's probably could be multi-back. Yes, but, uh, yes. In this day and age, that would be ill-advised. I think I would like you to stay. You don't have to leave. You should. Oh, no. Be my Ed McMahon. Stick around. Okay. <laughs> I, I can gain weight, and it would still be all right. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, cause you, you, um, uh, I, 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 uh -huh. I had goo. Yes. <laughs> Go to something else. Go to something else. Uh, the quote. Uh, in the book, Lost a Virginity a total of three times. Explain that. Well, if you don't lose it in a way that you like, initially, I think you should keep losing it until it works. <laughs> oh, man. Don't you think? Huh? Don't you think? Uh, yeah, and, and mine was messed up that first time, was messed up. So you could just delay it and just, I don't know, lose it 17 times later when it really works for you. I had an idea it was supposed to be meaningful and beautiful. Yeah. And it probably took me more than three times to think that. Not that I've had sex more than three times. <laughs> we'll be right back with Carrie Fisher. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. I'll see you Monday. Go get a shower and party. Have a good time.